internet and welcome to another video and you have joined me with the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. The RAV4 basically means it's a recreational activity vehicle and the 4 stands for the 4 wheel drive but this is pretty much a 4 wheel drive but kind of an everyday kind of car that you can use in your daily commute and let's start finding out how this car is. Let's start off with the front look now front is pretty bold and stylish with a lot of things going on and let me go around first and first you get the front two led headlights and also led fog lamps as well and then they are also daylight running lamps inside it and they work pretty well and then you get this big huge plastic grill and also the logo which is blue and you know if the logo is blue then it's a hybrid car from the, the Toyota brand and also there is this another slit in between it is the design feature and then I don't know nothing happens really it's just the like a step out here and then it's just the plastic bit that they put in between which looks a little too shabby and then continuing at the bottom you have this whole big front grill in the in 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 the in the bottom and then you also have this plastic chrome piece to be honest this looks a little too flashy in my opinion because the front looks very very sorted out but otherwise this makes it like a really shout shout out from the the whole you know front and then that is why this this chrome bit is a bit too much in my opinion but then anyways continuing it's a bit too windy i'm sorry about it and continuing you also get uh, the the four uh, sensors parking sensors in the front and also if you see it's very similar to a honda when you sit inside and you get this this hunch which which when you sit inside you would see them noticeably from inside as well there are railings on both the sides and also there is a panoramic sunroof yes you get a panoramic sunroof with this one continuing on the side you get first 225 by r18 tires and then the rims are 18 inches the finishing that they've given here is is in the chrome finish and then that in my opinion is a little too much and then when you continue there is hybrid badging and also you get the power foldable mirrors and also there is no blind spot indicator or anything sensor inside it and also continuing at the at the back uh, th there is a smart keyless entry system so you press and I don't know if you can hear but then it opens up and then it, you can also close by tapping on the handle and then you get some chrome uh, details out here as well and also at the back there is this nice little window at the back so the visibility is pretty good moving behind uh, there is this 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 tail light cluster which extends right up to the the, the rear quarter of the vehicle and then there are some kind of design i don't know aerodynamic or something that they put it on the headlights as well i'm pretty sure it's an aerodynamic feature and so that is why they put it out here and then the the the, the side is pretty simple in in terms of otherwise but there are also some boxy arches now previous generations used to have the round arches but now they've uh, toyota has started to put the 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 kind of squarish arches and that is why you can see quite a bit of height as well so usually on on normal cars you would find a frame that is visible under the door which is your chassis frame but then toyota has been very clever about that design and what it has done is hide it with the door itself so when you see this is the cladding that has been used to cover the door so your doors are longer and what happens is your your frames are never dirty so whenever you step out your pants are never dirty now continuing at the rear end as you saw there was a swooping design feature and as a result of that there is a quite a small back end uh, and also the rear window if you see has become quite small so the rear view from the mirror is pretty tiny as well and after that continuing the the, you also get the blue badging uh, Toyota hybrid badging as well and then you get two tail lights uh, they are standard and they do not come as an LED but they come with the halogen bulb options now the tailgate is remote operated or there is also a button which you can use to open it and it will beep as well for a while while it is opening and inside you can see there is a lot of space where you can put your two big bags and two small bags and there is also this 
partition that you can use to divide the compartment and also one very cool feature that Toyota has done is there is no lip in the boot and that is why where the sliding in and out your luggage is going to be pretty easy because of that and it's pretty much flat like there is there is no lip at all which is really clever in order to close the boot lid there is a button out here but if you want you can do is pull this lid and then the car will take care of the rest now step inside and you are greeted with a lot of luxurious materials for sure but then first things first let me start off with why has Toyota put like four different colors everywhere in this interior which is this tan sort of tan then this page on the roof line and then the black in the in the dashboard and then there is this brown sort of detailing everywhere around near the cup holders and where the charging stations is and then there is this tray on both the sides and then all of that is brown and then that sort of gives a very confused look from inside because there are just too many colors going on now but otherwise let's start off with the doors and the plastics in first the plastics are all soft touch plastics everywhere and then they are pretty decent quality as well and also the center console is pretty well uh, and robust in terms of its make and continuing with the steering wheel the steering wheel is uh, telescopic and adjustable in terms of height so you can do whatever you want I can just play along like this but then okay I should just stop okay anyways continuing then you get all the media controls and uh, the cruise control on your steering wheel so that is pretty neat and that's pretty much carried forward from the uh, the Camry hybrid and then you get a big dashboard in front of you which has a nice little uh, like quite a big screen in the in the in the center which gives you info about your driving and also how you are doing how the batteries are doing how the the four wheel drive system is doing you can also see how much power it's being given to all the four wheels and because it's a four wheel drive system so this 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 is quite a neat sort of feature that you get and if you, if you are a nerd then this is really going to be uh, a lot of fun inside when you start fiddling around inside the menu now there's this another cool kind of complaint and that is that there are just way too many beefs that keep happening even when you open the door or when you close the door or if you haven't worn the seat belt After the dashboard, now we come on to the aircon, aircon and the air conditioning is pretty straightforward. You get these dial knobs on both the sides. So it's a dual aircon. So even for the passenger and the driver, they have an independent aircon. You can control it with, the, uh, with your vents and also you can close them up. You also get cool seats on both the sides and you can adjust them. There is There are three levels of it, like one, two and three when you press the button. So you get that as well. At the bottom, you get this nice little chunky gear knob and it's got, uh, the car has basically it's, uh, simple modes like the dry mode and the sport mode. But apart from that, there are uh, a ton of different modes which we'll be discussing when we go on for a drive. Coming to the infotainment system, the infotainment system is quite big as you can see and quite in your face. But the, the idea behind that is that when you're driving the car, Toyota doesn't want you to get this distracted and that is why it's right in, in line of your view. You also get the manual controls around as as is with the with to Toyota but what they've done is they've removed the volume knob and the tuning knob which you get in the European models. In the European versions you still get the knobs around and that is still I think the feature that we all need, I don't know why Toyota removed the, the feature from this. It has uh, a lot of features inside you can do uh, right from your navigation to setting up final controls and also you can change your channels from the screen itself. Now that is a little challenge because the, the, the options are too small and sometimes I have just sort of clicked on some other channels which I didn't want to but then there are no buttons physical buttons to change the channel instead then it is on the screen and while driving it may be a little distraction although you have controls in your uh, steering wheel as well but still you still need sort of physical buttons even for a passenger it there are chances they may 
miss out when clicking on the on the options continuing with the seats the seats are super comfortable and they are the most luxurious seats in 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 this sort of range that i have seen the passenger seat is normal manual one but the driver seat comes with a uh, six way controllable uh, mode so uh, which is electronically controllable and also the seats are pretty wide and comfortable as well now bear in mind this car is pretty wide as well so the space is also converted inside as well and you find a lot of space inside in terms of storage space the car comes with a lot of storage around the, the on the door bins and and you can put quite a big uh, well, 1 liter 1.5 liter big bottles out here on both the sides as well and also you get the storage in the front as well which is your uh, your your handrest as well you get this tray and you also get a lot of features uh, storage inside as well you also get two cup holders in the front and two cup holders in the back in the handrest at the rear now in the front you get one aux cable one usb and also one uh, 12 volt 120 watt uh, socket as well and same go socket is available inside as well and also one more socket in the back as well but no usb for the rear passenger now the center control has the your parking brakes and also the hill hold feature or the normal hold feature which during your uh, traffic lights you can put it on and then it will just keep the brakes on for you which i use a lot and it's a very very neat feature there are five different modes that you get from the car which is the trail mode eco mode sport mode normal mode and ev mode those different modes can be used while driving on different conditions which we'll be discussing during the drive as well at the back so the first thing this door wouldn't open more than this so the angle is pretty small but it's all right you can still get in and out quite easily but uh, otherwise the there is quite a bit of space if you see for my legs as well and the, the seats are pretty much backwards in terms of the adjustments and you get quite a bit of space behind as well and also there is no uh, kind of bulge in the center so you can easily sit five people so you get a handrest and with two cup holders as well and there there is an aircon at the back as well two ac vents and again there is a charger which i mentioned before which is a 120 watt 12 volt charger also you get the the mounting points for your ch child seat which is your isofix and they are available on both the sides of the seat so on your right hand side and on your left hand side as well but otherwise the quality is pretty premium and also one cool feature is the the height of the, the seats is pretty low so getting in and out is pretty easier as you can see and just get in but it's not like those other SUVs where it's just too difficult to climb inside and outside but in this it's fairly easy so starting off with this car comes with a 2.5 liter dual overhead head camshaft four cylinder engine which produces 176 brake horsepower and it produces 220 newton meters of torque and apart from that the electric motors they produce about 118 newton uh, 118 brake horsepower and uh, 202 newton meters of torque the, the, the engine is is exactly the same and the motor is exactly the same from the Camry hybrid and just put same thing into this 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 car as well now with this 2.5 liter engine and the electric motors the, the is mated with a CVT transmission but not any CVT transmission but an eCVT an electronic CVT now it's quite a bit of complicated system to understand but in short there are planetary gears and mechanisms that make sure that you get a constant speed when you are driving and that is uh, a reason that that when you press the throttle the engine rpm goes to almost till your your maximum uh, rpm and that is why it becomes a little shouty as you can see And now what the what what the car does or the computer does is that when you floor the throttle the the engine rpms are kept constant and the gears are being changed now why is it done because uh, it's probably mentioned that it is done so that to get the maximum efficiency out of the entire package and that is why the the computer just calculates what speed to go at and when to change the gears and hence that is why the ECVT throughout the journey when you're driving there is this weird sort of electronics 
calculation that is going on and you can hear the, the electric motor being engaged and disengaged and also there is this electric whining noise which which initially is is quite evident when you drive it but otherwise it's if you get you once you get used to it it's it's fairly simple and it's 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 not that of a big deal the power delivery is quite smooth but it, the car is about 2230 kilograms 2.2 tons and that is what you feel in this car and when you're driving it you sort of tend to feel the heaviness of the car even though it's pretty much the same package from the Camry hybrid but then somehow in this it's it's a little noticeable and there is a, a bit of sluggishness while pulling off this car comes with five different modes which is your normal mode your eco mode your sport mode and your EV mode and also there is something called as a trail mode so I tried the car in the trail mode and honestly I couldn't feel any different but also if I put the car in the sport uh, mode, the, the displays change, they become red to tell you that it's in the sport mode. There is also a G sensor, like a gravity sensor, which is like pretty cool to make you understand that it's all become all sporty now. But to st harden the, the, the steering wheel uh, becomes a little harder and also the throttle response increases. But otherwise, I don't think there is quite a bit of a difference in terms of the sport and the normal mode but again uh, there is also an EV mode but you need uh, the battery charge uh, the charge enough to use that EV mode and then only the car will uh, allow you to drive in the EV mode and also if you are below 40 kilometers the car will automatically drive in the EV mode. I am able to get around 17 kilometers per liter from this car and considering that this is an SUV and to get this much of mileage and it comes with a 55 liter petrol tank but if you combine both of that you get a total the uh, uh, range of about 600 to 650 kilometers and that is pretty good for an SUV this big and this size which is 2.2 tons. The electronic steering is a bit too fuzzy I would say because initially at, uh, uh, when, when you start from the standstill the first quarter rotation of a steering doesn't really move the wheels but if you are at a speed and if you change the steering, uh, rotate the steering wheel at the same, uh, exactly the same uh, degree, then you would have quite a bit of steering angle. But now I think that is to do with the clever kind of electronics which are doing their work of, you know, uh, changing the, the steering angle based on your speed. But at the lower speed, it's quite a bit of a tussle because you have to go through a lot of rotations to get a fair bit of turn but the but the turning radius is quite small in uh, compared to other SUVs which is quite a good thing now the suspensions are on the softer side and that is probably the reason why you get a soft ride but then with the softer suspension comes the roll as well and this car has a bit of a roll if I am going at some speeds and that is not a very assuring thing because uh, I, I usually the I get the point that you know you have to have a fine balance between the comfort and the the cruising feature, but then sometimes it feels a tad too on the softer side, and that is why there is quite a bit of roll. Now the car comes with four disc brakes, and these work quite well, but the pedal is pretty kind of sensitive initially, and then. There is this weird sort of uh, noise from the pedal which I will let you hear now. The brakes are pretty sensitive and they work quite well. A point to mention was that this car comes with a wireless charging as well which you see underneath your AC controls. There is a the sort of uh, an area where you can put your phone and the uh, phone will start charging if it's capable of wireless charging. This car comes with uh, two front airbags for your passengers and the drivers and there is also side curtain airbags there is also a knee airbag for the driver there is a curtain airbag for the driver there is side curtain airbags for the, the rear passengers as well you get uh, the tire pressure monitoring system you also get 
uh, the traction control on this car because the car this big and it definitely needs the traction control as well and also this car comes with a single camera reversing camera and the quality on this camera is just amazing i think it is one of the best cameras that i have seen in this segment not even just in this segment but in 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 higher segments as well because the quality of the camera is crisp and also to do with the fact that the screen is pretty amazing in terms of its pixel and there is no glossiness there is no sort of there it isn't too matte or it it isn't too glossy so it is just about the right combination and with the right setting it is just it works brilliantly and it's super smooth and one thing that toyota has done is just worked on the on the infotainment system a lot which is quite evident and that is why the whole system is quite smooth if you open the maps and it's quite quite amazing in terms of its rivals so the car comes with a four wheel drive system now how this four wheel drive works is uh, traditionally the it's it's a two wheel drive system but the, suppose the wheels uh, at the back lose traction or when you are at an incline so the car is pretty clever and the computer will calculate that you need the rear uh, wheels power from the rear wheels as well and it will make sure to do that and that is quite a neat feature which you can see it in your uh, dashboard as well uh, there are settings which you can change and you can see which which wheels are being powered at what time So that was pretty much it for this video. Now you may ask who should buy this car. Now if you are looking for a proper kind of SUV then you might well go for this as well and shortlist this. It's a daily family car where you can put in a lot of stuff and also you can drive around. Plus it's a hybrid so it gives you a lot of efficiency as well. On an average you still get about 16 to 17 average as well and that is pretty good in terms of uh what you get out of this package but otherwise it's a pretty stylish car it's pretty robust i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have any questions related to this car make sure to write them down in the comment section below and i will reply to them as well anyways give it a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure to share and subscribe for more videos to come and i shall see you in the next video bye bye